Thanks for calling your local Harley Davidson dealer. How can I help you? Yeah, just calling to check. What would it run me to do a uh, scheduled maintenance on my Harley Davidson Pan America? That's going to run about $400. What? $400 just for an oil change? Got to be kidding me. Hey folks, welcome back to my garage. So if you've ever called your dealer asking for the price to get scheduled maintenance done, you may have gotten a better sticker shock. Turns out that scheduled maintenance on a motorcycle is a little bit more involved than just changing the oil. In fact, on a Harley-Davidson Pan America for the regular scheduled maintenance, there's 30 things that need to be checked depending on the mileage of the motorcycle. In this video series, I'm going to be going through and performing a scheduled maintenance on my Pan America according to the factory service manual. Now, let me just put the big disclaimers out here right now. I am not a Harley-Davidson trained or certified technician. I have no training in being a motorcycle mechanic of any kind. It's not something that I do by trade. I'm just a guy that enjoys working on my own vehicles, cars and bikes, and I've been doing it for a while. So that said, follow along with me and work on your bike at your own risk. This video is just for information and entertainment purposes only. All right, let's get started. Right, so make sure you have the bike somewhere that it's easy to work on and remove any accessories that you have on the motorcycle that may get in the way while you're trying to do the service. So you definitely want a service manual before you tackle something like this yourself. I have the online subscription version that I can reference on my computer. Uh, in addition to that checklist, I also make my own paper checklist and I have all of the same checks that are on the factory maintenance schedule. But what I do is I have the order just a little bit different, kind of grouped together to different sections of the bike, just makes it easier for me to go through. But everything's on there, everything's gonna get checked if you're following along. The first item on the list is checking the electrical equipment and switches. So we'll go ahead and power the bike on. All right, let's check all the lights. Check. And that is to be done every 5,000 miles. The next check I'm doing is the clutch lever bracket mounting screws. And then I'm also going to do the front brake master cylinder bracket mounting screws here. Uh, this check needs to be done every 10,000 miles or once a year, whichever comes first. It is a T30 Torx bit and the spec for the clutch is 60 inch pounds as the minimum, right? Whenever you're checking uh, a torque spec, Harley Davidson usually gives a range of torque for that fastener. You set your torque wrench to that minimum range and see if it is at least that. So let's go ahead and we'll do the, Good. and I'll bump it up <laughs> two foot pounds because the brake side minimum is actually specified at 62 inch pounds, not foot pounds, 62 inch pounds, right? We'll give that a check. We're good to go. The next check on my list is the front brake fluid, both the level and the moisture content. This is another every 5,000 mile check. So my fluid level, fluid level looks good to go. And to check the moisture content, you do need a brake fluid moisture testing tool. So of course, be prepared in case anything drips. And we'll pull the cover off. Green is good. The book actually does have a torque spec for these cap screws. It's five to seven inch pounds. I don't have anything that goes that low. So we're just gonna snug them up by hand.
Two more checks done. Next, we do the same thing with the rear brake fluid, checking the level and the moisture. To make it a little easier to get to this, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the seats out of the way. My level looks good. This one is just a twist cap. Put my rag around here. All right, good to go. Check and check. The service manual states that the brake fluid needs to be flushed out and replaced every two years or sooner if it fails those moisture checks. And as far as I'm aware, only a dealer can properly do that service because you have to have the computer that can flush the ABS pump that's on these bikes as a part of that. Every 5,000 miles, also it calls for lubricating the brake and clutch control. So that consists of lubricating the pivot pin for the front brake lever, pivot pin for the clutch lever, as well as lubricating the clutch cable. So you don't really need to, but just to make it easier for you to see on camera, I'm gonna take the hand guards off to get them out of the way. Oops. Careful not to drop your screws. Because <laughs> then you gotta go looking for them. There it is. So it's a four millimeter hex for the top of the pin, a 10 millimeter nut on the bottom. So just wipe off any old grease and residue. And I just have a little bit of all-purpose waterproof grease. Put a little bit on there. And then just line it back up. There we go. Screw her back in. Thread the bottom nut back on and then make sure you hold that top pin to finish off putting the bottom nut on. Spec for this is 44 to 62 inch pounds. I have the torque wrench set at 50. Okay. Good to go. And on the clutch side, before I re-lubricate the pivot pin because I need to pull this out anyway to do the clutch cable. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna pull that out. It's a T30 and an eight mil to hold the nut on the bottom. Oops, wrong way, there we go. Hold the nut, pull the pin. All right, we'll set those aside for now. All right, next we need to pull off this bottom plastic cover. So I'm gonna move the bars over a little bit to give me some room. And there's a teeny tiny little T10 torque screw underneath here that holds that in. There we go, that little guy there. And then that lets this plastic cover pull down and out of the way. So we'll remove that and set it aside. All right, I'm gonna get this handguard bracket out of the way, give some more room. Oh, 
All right, and I'll set that aside. To help make it easier to get the uh, clutch lever off of the mount up front, I'm gonna put some more slack into the clutch cable down here. So we just need to slide the boot off the adjuster and then loosen the jam nut, hold the adjuster, and loosen that. So it's a 13 and a 14 mil that I'm using. There we go. Bring that in a bit to introduce some slack to the cable. All right, and then from here, I can turn my adjusters, get these, bring those in, get some more slack. All right, and with my adjusters in, I now have enough slack that I can rotate this and it should just lift off of the cable. There we go. So if you can see this little pivot or area there where the cable, the uh, piece on the end of the clutch cable slips in there. Once you have enough slack that you can pull it out, you just rotate this to get it the cable lined up with that with that slot there. There we go. Uh, get the cable lined up with that slot and it'll slide off. With the lever off, I can just kind of pull the excess out of the cable and feed it through that slot and there we go. It'll pop right on out for you like that. All right, so the whole point of getting the clutch cable off disconnected like that is so that I can put my cable loop tool on there. And then I'm just using a cable lube product that squirts in here. Just got to insert the straw. All right, now this does make a bit of a mess. The idea is that it's going to force the lube in through here and down into the jacket, but a lot of it tends to backflow, so helpful to have a rag handy. And you just continue spraying down there to make sure that you're getting it all the way through into the cable. All right, now we just need to fish the cable back in through the adjusters. There we go. And then just pull out some of that cable, drop the clutch lever back onto it again, lining up that slot where the cable goes. Kind of hard to see what I'm doing and not block the camera at the same time. So let me try it from down here. There we go. And just be careful of your uh, switches down there, the metal contacts. All right, now we're ready to put the pivot pin back in there. So again, just make sure to wipe off, clean off any uh, old material left on that pin. I'm just putting a thin layer of waterproof grease on there. Don't need a lot. And we just line up, drop it in there. There we go. And then remember to thread the nut in on the bottom. And that torque spec is the same as it is on the brake side, 44 to 62. So my wrench is set to 50. There's a click, so we're good to go. Next, we'll replace that electrical cover that we removed. There. Lubricate brake and clutch controls, check. Next on my list is adjusting the clutch. And usually, you can make fine tune, you can fine tune your clutch adjustments with the adjuster at the front here, right? But since, 
I put in a whole lot of slack in this cable using the adjuster that's under the tank. Uh, in order to take this off, I'm going to have to adjust at that part as well. So the process, whenever you've messed with the main adjuster under the tank, is you take the lock nut that's up front here and back it all the way up against the adjuster. And then we're going to turn the adjuster clockwise all the way in. Okay, so it's bottomed out against the clutch, uh, clutch lever housing. And then from there, we back it out three turns. So counterclockwise. One, two, three. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and bring the jam nut in to hold that there. Okay. And make sure that the cable is seated up against that adjuster. Also want to make sure that the bars are straight ahead before we work on and doing the adjustments with the under tank adjuster. All right, to make it easier to get to the under tank adjustment here, I took this side piece panel off. And just one tip I wanted to share. Uh, I don't have a Torx bit that is thin and long enough to reach down through this hole here, right down in there. But the factory toolkit happens to come with one, so don't always discount what comes in the factory toolkit. You might find it helpful. So anyway, we'll set that aside. And I got my wrenches, my 13 and my 14. And this is still loose from before, but what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this until we take out all the slack at the lever. Okay, we just keep backing out that adjuster until all this slack at the front adjuster is taken up. Couple more turns. That's good. Now we need to do the clutch adjustment at the front here to get the proper amount of free play, which is between one to two millimeters between the ferrule of the cable and the adjuster. So I'm gonna set my digital calipers to one and a half. And then we loosen the jam nut, turn this in. Of course, you also wanna make sure that everything is properly seated where right? Okay, now we can turn that in. All right, so I got a little bit of a gap here. And also whenever you're doing these clutch adjustments, the engine is supposed to be cold. That's good right there. So we'll tighten that jam nut, give it a little extra with some pliers. All right, so that is good to go. We'll go ahead and slide our boot back over. Okay, clutch adjustment, check. My next few checks involve the bottom half of the motorcycle, things like checking the coolant, checking the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the skid plate off of one. Checking the coolant is done every 5,000 miles and it is done with the bike leaned over on the side stand to get the proper reading. Checking the coolant level is done of course with the engine cold. So you just pull out the little rubber plug there, it's got a dipstick attached. We'll wipe that. And in. And 
them back out. And we look good. Also do a visual check of the bike and the coolant hoses for any signs of leaks. And in particular on this side, what I like to check and keep an eye on is the distance between this exhaust header and the radiator hose there. This has been a common area of concern with uh, Pan America owners. I've seen folks wrapping the, you know, either wrapping the header in, um, in some kind of exhaust wrap or wrapping the hose to help prevent any contact here. And some folks have had issues with contact there. Harley says the spec for this gap is seven millimeter, which just so happens to be the width of a number two pencil in between the flats. So take a number two pencil, and if you can guide through there without hitting or just lightly touching the exhaust header, then you should be good to go. Right? If you have less of a gap than that, then I would recommend, if you're still under warranty, taking it to your dealer so that they can get that hose adjusted properly. Continue your inspection of your hoses on the other side of the bike, checking for any signs of leaks, checking for the overall condition of the hoses, any leaks around the thermostat housing. Right? And if when you check the level of your coolant, if it was down from the last time you checked it, then that's a good indication that you do have a leak that you need to find. If that's the case, you may also want to look into doing a pressure test of the system as well. All right, along with checking the coolant level, the service manual does call out using a uh, antifreeze tester to test the quality of the coolant to make sure that it's still offering good freeze protection. I don't have one of those handy right now. Uh, the bike's just about a year old. I'm sure this coolant's still good to go. Um, also, it does call out for replacing the coolant regardless. That should be done every 30,000 miles on this bike. My next check is cleaning and inspecting the radiator. And to make that job a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and take off my radiator guard. Also make sure you check and clean that oil cooler that's down there underneath the uh, front headers. Once you get all the dirt cleaned off, get in there and just give it a good inspection to make sure that you don't see any damaged fins that, need, that are going to need taken care of. Service manual says to check your battery once a year. So go ahead and check the overall condition of the battery if it needs cleaned. Check and see if your terminals need clean. And then finally go ahead and do a voltage check of the battery. A good battery should read at least 12.7 volts. If it's lower than that, you're going to want to charge it up and then test it again. My next check is the exhaust, and that includes looking at the heat shields, making sure they're on there good, nothing's coming loose, and I'm also going to check for leaks. And the way to do that is I'm going to start the motorcycle, I'm going to cover the exhaust with a towel, and then listen to hear if there's any leaks coming from anywhere else in the exhaust system. <laughs> Didn't hear any leaks. The owner's manual says to clean, lubricate, and check the adjustment on the chain every 600 miles. In addition to that, the service manual says for every 5,000 mile service, we're going to be doing a few more things with the drivetrain. We're going to be giving a very close inspection of the rear sprocket.
We're also going to check for any excessive wear on the chain guide in here. And then we're going to check and see if the chain has been stretched beyond its serviceable limit. And for that check, we need to have it in first gear. We're going to measure 16 pins. So go ahead and mark. I'm going to mark off 16 pins with a pencil. And while we're pushing back on the tire to put tension on the top, but lower the front, our limit is 10.1 inches. And you can see I'm a good bit under 10 inches here. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and check my chain slack. I already have a video where I show how I have done that. I've made a couple of changes to how I do it. I made myself a, a handy little tool that works on uh, different bikes that I have. So I just take this big metal carpenter square, lay that flat on the ground. This is just a piece of cardboard with a magnet hot glued to the bottom. And then on the front, I have a starting line. And I have the different ranges for my different bikes, right? My Pan America, there's 50 mil, there's 60 mil. So all I need to do is put the magnet there and I move it to the start line, get that lined up in the middle. And I pull down on the chain to tension it, adjust my start line right there. I am right at the edge of the spec there. So I'm not going to do the adjustment on the chain right now. It's also due for a cleaning, uh, you could probably tell. Uh, but if you're interested in learning how to do that, check out the other videos I have on chain maintenance. Next, I'm checking the rear wheel. And I'm going to start with the spokes, since I do have the spoked rims. A couple of things that we'll need for that is torque wrench uh, set to 35 inch pounds, which is what the spec is for the spokes. Uh, it's an eight millimeter socket that goes over the nut. It's a four millimeter wrench that holds the flat part of the spoke. Of course, and an extension to get through to them. And then also have a screwdriver and some painter's tape. So the way the book says and what I'll do is you go around tapping them with the screwdriver, listening to the pitch. And if anything sounds kind of dull, then you go back and check it with the torque wrench. Actually where the tape comes in is you mark it and then you go back and check the marked ones after you're done. All right, so I'll start at the valve stem and go clockwise. That was a little iffy. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep going. So we'll check that too. All right, but before we do, I'm going to go and check the ones on the other side. That one's a little iffy. Okay. We'll check that one.
All right, and I'm back to the valve stem. All right, that's good. I'm going to skip this one and come and do this one because it's on this side of the wheel. You should alternate sides with any adjustments that you make. Okay. Let's just get in here, hold the flat part. That one's good. That's good. Well, we're good. For spoke rims, the service manual says to check the torque of the spokes at the thousand mile service, the first one, the 5,000 mile service, and then every 15,000 miles after that. If you find five spokes in a row that need adjusting, uh, this, they call out in the service manual that it's time to replace the rim, if that happens, because it's probably something was wrong with the rim. And then also, if you do make any adjustments to your spokes, you're supposed to take the wheel and check the run out. Right, which means taking it off the bike. I mean, I guess you could kind of eyeball it with it on the bike, but the right way to do it is to take the wheel off the bike, put it on a truing stand, and make sure that the wheel is still true that way. And while I'm back here checking this tire, I'm gonna go ahead and check the pressure and the tread depth. So, of course, pressures should be checked a lot more often than just your scheduled service. But we'll go ahead and double check it right now here. 42, that is good to go. And then tread depth. I like to actually use my digital calipers, check it, and then I write it down so I can kind of keep an eye of how my tread usage is going over time. So, four point four. Check a couple different spots just to get an average. Six, that's because it's more on the sidewall. I'm checking the middle where it's going to be the least. 4 4.2, 4.26, 4.4, 4.7, 4. So I'm going to call it 4.2 overall. All right, so quite a few checks done here already. There's still a good bit more to go. In the next video, we'll go ahead and put the bike up on a jack so that we can get front and rear tires off the ground. We need to do that in order to check and adjust the steering head bearings. There's still plenty more things to do. We're gonna check and service the front wheel. We gotta look over the brake system. And of course, we still have to service the air filter and of course, change the oil, right? So all of that and more coming up in the next video. Thanks for watching.